Hi, this is Tim Homer from Desert Data Recovery in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, today, I want to take you through the basics of PC3000. Uh, PC3000 is a uh, the best professional data recovery hardware and software equipment on the market today, by far. Uh, and as such, it can be fairly complex to use. And there's a lot of videos out there that take you through um, the more complex parts of data recovery, such as uh, rebuilding translators, uh, repairing corrupted media caches, etc. But there's not much out there really for the newbie, the beginner, who's just starting with PC3000. So this is a series of videos I'm going to do. This first one is just about how to set up PC3000. Uh, then in the next one we'll do the basics of Western Digital Drives, then after that Seagate Drives, and then uh, how to set up a task in Data Extractor which is uh, the way we image a drive and we finally recover the data. Uh, so let's move on. This is uh, the first screen you'll come to when you start up PC3000. Uh, so we'll call it the, the home screen for want of a better word. Um, but be before we get to that screen, uh, you, I'm assuming you've already installed PC3000. There's a booklet that comes with the, the card and the, and the software that allows you to, it actually helps you set PC3000 up. So I'm assuming uh, it's installed, it's done. You've maybe had a play around with it um, and you have your COM ports installed. So we have the main PC3000 Express on the icon. This is the Express. You may have the PC3000 UDMA. Uh, UDMA E that, that has two ports, but this is the Express that has four. But whether you have the four port version or the two port version, these, this, the process is basically the same. So you have a choice here <coughs> of setting up SATA ports um, and PETA ports. So you can check all four SATA ports and you can create a shortcut. There you go, Let's put the shortcut down, down there. So you have a shortcut to go through to uh, start up PC3000 using all four SATA ports. Or of course you could choose three SATA ports and a PETA port. Again, you can create a shortcut just to make it easy. But um, as, as I say, if you have four SATA ports uh, chosen, you can't then choose a PETA port without closing the program down. Uh, so, but, but the good thing is, if you do choose to have, um, so, correction, you, you might want to have three SATA ports, and we'll create the um, shortcut there, then you might want to have a PETA port on its own. So then, you, because the good thing is about PC3000, you have the ability to run two instances of PC3000 at the same time. So, here we have the uh, SATA port 012 and the PETA port just one. So we have an option to start up PC3000 with the three SATA ports. And you'll see we have three SATA ports available over here. As opposed to close this down, we'll just minimize it. And then you can start up the PETA port. So it, it just gives you a little bit of flexibility without having to, to shut one program down if you have recoveries going live. And here we have one PETA port live. Um, and, and of course, as I say, you can run more than one instance of PC3000. This is our one PETA port. This is our three SATA ports. So the good thing is if you have this set up here and you have your PETA port, if you have if you suddenly have in another SATA drive and you, you didn't want to use the PETA port, you can just set up one single SATA port. Okay, so the good thing is you can use two instances of PC3000 at the same time. So we'll close these down. So for the sake of argument today, we'll use uh, all four SATA ports. And as I say, this takes you into the home screen. And uh, you can see we have four SATA ports available. So we can recover four SATA drives through this particular program here. Uh, so this is the way the home screen is laid out. We have some uh, drop down items from the menu at the top here. We have some shortcuts. Easy way to do things. You'll find you'll be using these shortcuts an awful lot. Uh, we have a list of hard drive vendors. We have a list of the um, utilities that are used for each of those hard drive vendors. And 
this this is basically each of these utilities have been created specifically for this group of drive so so the um caviar utility has been specifically designed to recover data from those drives the western digital marvel utility has been specifically designed to recover data from marvel drives and you can see all the supported families down here which is quite a substantial amount and down the bottom we have the status registers i can show you more about that in a little while we have the error registers and we have the power settings so let's kind of let's talk about some of the drop downs start at the top some of the drop downs first um data extractor utility auto detect and, and run utility all have shortcuts in here so we'll talk about that in a little while so if we go to tools and settings this is where you can uh, personalize some of pc 3000's operations specifically for your needs um we have a it, it's it's kind of best always to start with the default settings to learn about things and then you can slowly tweak things as and when you see fit but for instance you have a choice here of um, when PC3000 shuts down whether you, you switch the power off to drives whether you leave the power on to drives etc uh, it's always best to leave it to do not switch off the drive you might have spent uh, two or three hours getting a drive live uh, by um, correcting firmware issues by changing head maps in rams using loaders all, all different sorts of things and you may have spent all that time to get the drive live only for your pc to crash and if if pc 3000 crashes if you don't have this set it would switch off the drive so it's always best to leave the drive on um, you can change timeout settings uh, for both the, the drive and within um, HD UDMA, sorry. Uh, application priority. Uh, again, it's always best to leave this at the default setting of normal. Uh, if you do change it to high, uh, there's actually a warning here if you want to set it. It says anything but normal may cause instability in PC3000. So um, again, if you set that to high and you're running other programs like RStudio, UFS Explorer, etc., you may cause problems and you may cause your system to crash. So if you leave that at normal, the best thing to do. Um, your PC3000 ports, you have a certain amount of, uh, of flexibility here where you can set your own settings. The default mode for SATA mode is auto. You can also change it to SATA 1 or SATA 2. Auto normally tends to be the best thing to have. Um, and, and you have the ability to instigate some older protocols here, like IORDI, etc. But um, again, there's really no need to. If you leave that at uh, default, will be the best thing. We also have an option to, um, to give you warnings as well. Uh, and when you first start off using PC3000, it's maybe good to have these warnings because uh, a lot of the commands you do, like software reset and hardware reset, etc., those um, they they normally done through shortcut icons. Uh, you know, you, when you first start in using the program, uh, you might get your soft resets and your hardware resets confused. So it's good for when you're first starting off to actually for PC3000 to ask you, are you sure you want to send a soft reset? Are you sure you want to send a hard reset, etc.? So when you first start off, I suggest maybe you can use those. And you can also, when, when we get into the utility, which will be the next video we'll do, you can also change the way some of the menus react within the utility. Um, next tab is indicators. Again, no reason to change these, but you know, uh, these are basically the status set indicators. These are green. The error indicators, these will be red. I mean, you can you can choose, you know, a pretty fuchsia if, if you want to, but you know, leaving it at lime green seems sensible to me, and to leave the errors in red seems sensible to me as well. Again, you can customize reports, uh, what the background color is, the uh, the writing color, uh, your error codes. If, if anything's incorrect, it'll show it in red, etc. Warnings, there's my future. Warnings in future. Uh, you can um, set font size, the type of font. You know, really, there's no need to change those, but should you want to, you can. Exactly the same with the log file. When you, you, you're working with a drive, when you start a drive up, it'll keep uh, a log um, 
in 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 that profile folder of what's happened with the drive so far and all your actions and, and interactions or most of your actions and interactions with the drive so um if you come back to a drive three or four days after working on it you can kind of find out where you were or if another person in the company is working on that particular drive they can find out where you were so um, it's good and again you can you can customize them i don't see any reason why you'd want to but you can you can set sound to um, the sata ports as well again i'm not sure why you'd want to but you can Com ports. This is is f fairly important here. Um, you would have got the uh, the PC USB Terminal 3 uh, adapters, which are the com ports with your PC 3000. Um, you can buy extra com ports from Ace Labs. Uh, this um, on this particular system here, I obviously have four uh, SATA ports because it's PC 3000 Express, um, but I only have two com ports connected at this moment in time. Uh, so you, you've got the choice. You can either allocate a port. Let's say I have two COM ports. So you can allocate a COM port, which allows you to work with um, the terminal with a drive. So whenever I'm using SATA uh, port zero, it will automatically connect to COM port three. Uh, so if you have four COM ports attached, you can allocate one to each individual uh, SATA port. But the other way to work, because I've only got two uh, com ports attached is ask at first call. So basically when you start up SATA 0 it will ask you which terminal port would you like to use with that port and that's a good thing to to have. Like I say if you have four com ports set a com port for each SATA port if you don't then uh, leave it at ask at first call and this is, this is basically if you're just using the terminal on its own uh, so you might be extracting the ROM from a Western Digital USB PCB uh, and again you can set a port to that but of course if you've only got four COM ports they might all be used. This gives you the choice of it again when you're extracting the ROM from a USB PCB it will actually ask you which COM port you want to use and that to me seems sensible. So there's some of the basic settings you can use. Um, scripts, uh, PC3000 allows you to create scripts that work, that you can use with drives. Again, this is quite advanced work, uh, so when you're just starting off with PC3000, no need to go through that. This actually allows you to connect your, de your database with Ace Labs. Um, there's a, a blog post about this uh, on the Ace Labs blog, and I'll put a link to that uh, underneath this video. Uh, ATA Commander, you have the option to, to create ATA commands that you can actually uh, send to drives that you've created specifically. Again, more advanced. And we have a power monitor. So for instance, uh, at the moment we're set on SATA 0, so the power monitor is set on SATA 0, and uh, it, this will give you the, the, the current amperage the drive is using, uh, the, the 5 volt circuit, and the sorry, the 12 volt circuit at the top and the 5 volt circuit at the bottom. And we have shortcuts to power control. These basically, if this is turning on the power to say to zero, turning on the power to say to one, well that's actually done through a shortcut here, so you'll probably never use that. And again, just a software reset to a drive and a hardware reset to a drive with some hotkeys, but you've actually got shortcuts to software reset and hardware reset here. So, uh, that's pretty much all, all we have there, HDD uh, reference, it just sh shows you a reference of all the different drives you can use, um, there's no real reason to use that. You can actually, when you have multiple pages uh, open, you can actually, you can actually change the tiles to be, um, show horizontally or vertically, again we'll go through that when we, when we go into a Western Digital Utility uh, in the next video. So, we'll talk about some of the shortcuts now. So this is basically how we turn the power on, and this is how we select uh, the port we're going to use. So if we want to use SATA port 2, and you can see we can turn the power on now to SATA port 2. Or SATA port 0, we can switch the power on to SATA port 0. I have a Western Digital drive attached here, and you can see at the bottom we have the drive is busy because it's loading up the system area data. Now you can see now we have SATA access to the drive. Uh, DRD is drive ready, D 
DSC's drive seat complete. Uh, so now we have access to the, the drive, but these are basically what these icons actually mean. So uh, this is, is a shortcut to go through to Data Extractor. Data Extractor uh, is how we image drives, either on a uh, sector level or through the file system, etc. Again, this will be one of the future videos, the basics of using that. This is, is how we auto detect which utility we want to use. So if you just happen to be uh, clicked on the Seagate utility, if you auto de detect, it will uh, interrogate the drive and it will know that it's a Western Digital Marvell drive just by selecting the auto here. And we can run the utility and we can auto detect the actual drive family which is a Diablo S3 and we can start the utility and it will tell us uh, information from the, the system area uh, both about the ROM, how the system area is set up, how many heads it's got etc but that's for another video this is just how to use the shortcuts. If you have a um, if you have a drive which is a little unstable uh, you might find that uh, when you want to start the utility the drive will hang well a software reset or a hardware reset may well help that and you can set any of those by default if you want to as well this particular icon uh, I believe allows you to mount a drive through PC 3000 in Windows 7 personally I've never used it um, so I guess you probably won't do either um, this is a shortcut to software reset, this is a shortcut to a hardware reset, and again, this is a shortcut just to take you to the hard drive references. So that's basically all the menu items at the top. As explained earlier, HDD vendors, which uh, utility you want to use with the vendor, and all the families covered with that particular utility. So, if we move down to here, uh, the status bars here, um, VSY is busy, and, and you, you will, you'll certainly get that when you first pair on a drive. If the drive has problems and it can't get SATA access, it, it may well stay busy. Um, but there's, a, there's ways to get around that, uh, which we'll talk about in, in future videos. Uh, DRD is drive ready. DWF is drive write failed. DSC is drive seek complete. We have drive uh, request. We have correct, index, and error. So all, all those will kind of point you uh, as to what's happening with the, with the drive as you're working with it. And we have error um, registers here. For all of these, I'll actually put a PDF uh, online for you, and I'll put a link under the, un, un, under the video so you can see what these uh, actually mean. But you have bad, bad block, uh, uncorrectable data, um, ID not found, abort, uh, track not found and address marker not found and a, a lot of those might point to ECC errors with the drive etc but as I say I'll put a PDF with a link under the video and you can have a look at those with, um, in a little bit more detail and now over here we have the power settings and you can see if there's any um, fluctuation with the power we have both the um, the 5 volt channel and the 12 volt channel and uh, with some Seagate drives, when you first pair a drive on, if the drive is not spinning at all, uh, you might find you might have the 12 volt power be red and the 5 volt power be green because there's there's a, a TVS diode failure. Uh, so this is good to kind of put you uh, in the right direction of certain failures. So that's basically PC3000, uh, how it can be set up, how it can be customized for your needs. Uh, if you like the, the, the video, you can press uh, subscribe underneath and uh, you'll be notified when we do the Western Digital uh, video, which will be the next few days, and then the Seagate video and Data Extractor and so on. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it.